hello and welcome back to the show in a new school year. So I got a shave and a fresh cut. So it's going to be a good year. Now let's talk about three teams. Boys soccer, girls volleyball, and girls cross country. Now, boys soccer team, they've had a good season, but they had a rough start. They start 0-4, but then they started to pick it up. I mean, they really started to find their way. They're finishing strong now in the later half of their season. In their last nine, they're 7-1-1. One, one. Currently, they're 6-3-1 and one in the American Conference. So they're really on their way to making a push to the playoffs. No guarantees, but they're definitely making a tough argument to get in. Now, girls volleyball, it's kind of a passer season. They've struggled. They've achieved. The other night they had a nice win against Norristown, but they just can't find their way. They just can't really get out of a hole that they consistently find themselves in. They're two and they're well now they're three and eight in the American Conference, but you, you, it's a young team. There's not much you could really expect other than you know failure at first, but they're really working hard, and it looks like they can pick it up for next season and be pretty good. And girls cross country. Now, it's tough to say that they've had a bad season when potentially they have three girls who could arguably make states, two most likely, and then a third, hopefully. But you, you don't really know. And they've struggled as a team, but individuals, they've had better seasons. And we'll talk more about that with our next guest, with our next guest. Uh, Mr. Tom Hasty. We'll be right back. Hello, and we're back with uh, Mr. Tom Hasty to talk about, a little bit about the girls' cross country. And now, Mr. Hasty, it's been a tough season. Oh, yeah. You guys, as a, as a team, you're only one in three. I mean, are you disappointed or are you? I can't say I'm disappointed. I think the girls have been running well. Um, we had a couple issues for our first two meets. Uh, one of our top runners, was in France on vacation. Mm. That really hurt us. Yeah. Uh, another of our top and our top five runners uh, had an injury. So, you know, you take your top five runners who score and take two of them out of the equation, that's almost half the scoring team. And uh, I think now that we have those individuals back, I think the rest of the season is going to be even better. So we're expecting a strong finish? Oh, yeah. This is yeah. definitely going to be a strong finish. Um, I see, I hope to have a couple girls go to states and uh, definitely improve our record. I don't think, I think we're going to win almost every race that we have coming for the rest of the season. And, and before we started rolling, you were talking about the, some of those girls. Um, we were talking about Sarah. Sarah Record, yep. And uh, potentially Molly, if she gets in. Then Molly we'll, McHugh and, who, and uh, Kat Kluczynski. Yep, so those three really have uh, a good chance to make it to states. The thing about it is states isn't a time. It isn't that you have to run this time and then you're in. It has to do with at districts. Do you come in in one of the top like 30 to 35 places? So it might be a fast race that day or a slow race. We don't know. So. Mm -hmm. Hopes are high. Yeah, they are. I think they can do it, and I think they know they can do it. It's just a matter of putting in the training between now and then, the quality workouts that need to happen. And um, you, next week you're at Paul Short's mm -hmm. Invitational. At, where is that again? So this is at Lehigh University, Lehigh University. And this is actually a meet for colleges and high schools. So there'll be college guys, college girls. Um, they run a little bit of a longer race, like a 6K. And then they have high school. Um, and high schools, there's, I think there's about 70 to 80 girls high schools that are going to be there competing. So it's a nice, big meet. And it gets close to the, to the feel of districts. And it's mm -hmm. actually on the district course. So the girls are going to get some experience running at that course so that they have a better chance at states. It's definitely a strong advantage for when you guys are ultimately at districts. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, we'll see. Thank you for being on and uh, wish you the best of okay, luck. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back. Season two, are you ready? Uh, not really. <laughs> Season one was great. I know. We, what is it? Seven, seven followers you have? 45.
No. Yeah. Hi. Don't. <laughs> how many of those? How many of those people are your relatives? My, my relatives aren't on Twitter. But I follow, like, to be fair, like, I follow, like, a thousand people. Oh, it's only fo- 45 of them following yeah. you back. And, like, I'd probably say, like, a solid, like, five or six. Yeah. Five or six of them are actually, like, you know, like, like fake Twitters. Yeah, I'm a little distracted because, like... Yeah, you know, they're kind of jumping around. What's this happening in that room? Okay. Looks a little sketchy. It's weird. Anyway, do you have an actual question? Um, yeah. What's two plus two? Not a hard one. How are the kids? Um, they're all right. Driving me a little crazy. Driving us all crazy. You should really get rid of them. So yeah, and spend more time here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I made a promise. I'm gonna keep that if I became super successful, yeah. you'll get a check. What do you? Is it? Is something gonna be written on the check, or it's just you know, you're just gonna take a check out of your checkbook and hand it to me? Uh, you're gonna get a check one day, and you're not you're not gonna get a response. Okay. I mean. How much money would you expect? This is on tape now, so you have no choice. Yeah. Um, like a million, maybe. I was like, like I was like thinking like, maybe like twenty grand. All right, all right, I'll take twenty. I mean, I'll take twenty grand. I mean, but like, it wouldn't be like for like personal use. It would be for like the. Yeah. A million would probably like, the school district probably wouldn't let you have that. Yeah, David Friedman just threw a giant um, piece of wood across the room in there so i should probably get back to oh it. you have to do the you have to do the confession first okay hurry up i got i do it, do it. um i confess that um this will be the last time i'm on this show for antonio i confess that goodbye young and sweet she only 17 she's a dancing queen hello and we're back with the show uh we're here with David Aaron to talk some uh, boys soccer. And David, you guys are 5-3-1. and one. A Nice win against Springfield, I believe, yesterday? Upper Dublin. Upper Dublin, excuse me. You guys are kind of making a push for the playoffs. Yeah, I think uh, we started off the season a little rough, 0-4. But since then, we've only had one loss on the season. And I think uh, we really turned things around. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. It really killed you guys, the fact that you, those – Two of those games were um, in-conference games. And if you would have won both of them, you, you can imagine you'd be second or third in the conference. Um, now, it, it's difficult to see this team kind of progressing with, like, five, five defensemen. You guys often do, you do struggle often trying to score goals. I mean, where have you guys kind of progressed there? I think uh, recent, or at the beginning of the season, we really had trouble getting offense going. But uh, recently, we've been working the balls up the wings. And uh, with our wing backs like Owen Deacher, me, Nick Segregan, we can really uh, push up the sides of the field, then work it into our big men in the middle like Joe and uh, Abram Austin. And then I think we've been uh, producing goals much more than we did in the beginning of the season. And that's why uh, we've been pretty successful. You guys have been doing a very nice job with that. I mean, do you guys really see yourself? I mean. Best case scenario, you win out, and you do get considerations for the playoffs and say you do make the tournament. I mean, do you think you guys can really be a challenge? I, I do. I think we can beat any team in Suburban 1. I mean, last week we beat Wissa Ickin, who's currently ranked fourth out of 50 teams in uh, District 1. So I, I honestly think we can be the best team in District 1. And... Uh, I mean, we have to play to the best of our ability, play together as a team. But if we do that and everything comes together, I think we can really make a, a deep run this year. All right. Thank you for being on. Thanks. And we'll be right back with Let's Get Major. Hello, and uh, welcome back. And uh, let's get major. And let's talk about Derek Cheater. And let's talk about the sympathy people have for him and the sympathy people don't have for him, which is odd. But let's talk about what they have for him. People love Derek Cheater. He was one of the greatest players, not ever, but definitely in Yankees history. He's the only player in Yankees history with 3,000 hits. That's, I mean, that's got to account for something. Ruth, Garrick, DiMaggio, Mantle. That's got to, 3,000 hits is a lot of hits. And all the great moments he had, the one time he dove into the stands, he got a bloody face. He got a cut right on his face and he went right back in the game. The timing against Oakland, the playoffs, 
where he runs down and he's that little great toss to get Jason Giambi out right there and move the, and let them make sure the Yankees are move on into the playoffs. And all of the great moments in between. People oddly think that Derek Cheater isn't a great Yankee or isn't a great player. People say, oh, he played 20 years, but he didn't lead in, statistic, in every statistic after 20 years. Did you look at some of the names on that list? They're ridiculous. Hank Aaron? You can expect Derek Cheater to have more home runs than Hank Aaron? The guy was pumping 40, 50 home runs a season before Royds in the 60s with Bob Gibson. If Bob Gibson were to come today and pitch, he would be unhittable. Guys like Sandy Koufax, another unhittable. Tom Weaver, Tom Seaver, at the end of his career. I mean, like, people can't put Derek Cheater and say, oh, he didn't lead in every statistical category after 20 years of baseball. In this day and age, when the game is so much harder to play and the athletes are so much better, you know, it was harder to hit back then, but now it's just harder to survive. He should be crowned and given the key to New York for what he's done. It's ridiculous. He's, in my opinion, he's arguably a, one of the great Yankees. He's not the best, but he's great. You can't knock him for not having every statistical category being number one. You can't knock him for having the greatest war ever. When Jeter started playing, nobody knew what war was. Nobody even knew war would exist. You know, and it's ridiculous. We've been, become too self-absorbed with this money ball theory that we forget that baseball is a sport that touches you in the heart, not a sport that touches you in the brain. And the, the thing that really upsets me about the whole Derek Cheater thing is that people don't realize Derek Cheater is one of the only players in history to win a five World Series. All right, throw out, throw out the Yankees in like the early 40s and 50s. That was irrelevant. Baseball really became, started becoming like early 60s to about mid 60s. That's when baseball really started becoming every team was about as fairly competitive. It wasn't the richest team bought the best players and the richest teams won. It became fairly competitive once you hit the 60s and 70s and the money sharing became a little bit better and teams started making more money. And then it just kind of uneven with free agency. But back to Jeter. It's hard to imagine that people really don't think he's one of the great Yankees ever. It's really hard to imagine that. And it's ridiculous. Because when I am old and I have grandkids, and I'm gonna ask, they're going to ask me, Dad, who or Grandpa, who was one of the greatest baseball players you ever saw? And I'm going to sadly say, Derek Cheater. He just had all the special moments. That's all we got. Um, I'd like to thank David, Aaron, uh, Mr. Tom Hasty for being on. Thank Ferry, Ellis, and everybody in between. Um, that's all we got, and I'll see you next time. Oh, missed it, but if it went straight, I would have got a strike, and that's the bell. So you better get to class, kids. Better get to class. Oh, Ellis left.